Hey guys, Brian Hare here, and today we're going to be going over the super trendy look, the dip dye, or I call it the pink ombre. We've got our great model Curiel here, and uh, really I just wanted to show, I see it a lot right now, I see it everywhere, they've got this really, you know, with the ends a different fun color. I liked pink, Curiel agreed that we would do, uh, we would do well with pink in her hair. So I just wanted to show how to do it so that it comes out looking nice and professional. I see a lot of people doing this at home where they're literally just dipping their hair into a bowl of something. So this is how a salon professional gets the job done. Uh, I actually wanted to go through working off of her natural part and uh, sort of do this just like I would do an actual ombre so that we have a nice actual fade into the pink rather than just a hard line where the pink starts. You can see I showed the bowls there. I have a few different shades of pink because rather than just one solid color at the end, I did want it to have a little bit of dimension. It, uh, I have seen her since and it actually will have a nice little bit of dimension. So I hope that shows up well enough on, on this video for you guys to see. So as you see, I'm coming through, working off of her part, four standard sections, working at the bottom. Uh, the color I chose to use for this one is the Paul Mitchell Inkworks. I mixed it with a nice thick white conditioner to give myself a little bit more of a pastel tone. I didn't want the, uh, the screaming hard magenta of the hot pink as it is right out of the bottle. I wanted it a little bit softer. So as you can see, I've got my sections going side by side just like the ombre video. I'm just hand painting, holding the brush vertically, uh, parallel to the hair making sure there's a good bit of color on the brush, holding those ends, and then just gliding down the hair. I, uh, I use the darker of my two pinks in these bottom sections so that it would have a little bit deeper of a color towards the bottom. And as you'll notice, as I work up towards the crown of the head, I use less of the dark pink and a little bit more of the, the lighter baby pink because I want it to, just like an ombre, it vary in intensity as it gets down through the lengths of the hair. She's got a finer hair texture so you can see we're definitely taking a little bit larger sections than you would if you were dealing with a lightener or a permanent hair color. I've previously gone in and actually she's a balayage client of mine so I know that there's lightener in there and uh, that's gonna give me a nice canvas to work off of so this pink can show up pretty. To create the different levels of pink that I used here, I just used uh, different amounts of conditioner really. I, if I wanted it more of the baby pink, which you'll see in through the crown and around the face, it's mostly a nice conditioner with just a little bit of the pink in there just to create that soft effect. Whereas for this color, the darker of the two pinks, I have uh, obviously much more of the color. And then again, because of the width of the section, I chose to go with the three long lines, and then as you work your way down, I am putting lines in between those lines, and then so on and so forth until all of those lines sort of converge together at the tips. Doing that is what's going to help to wash out that color a little bit, rather than having that hard line somewhere in the mid shaft. Here you can see I start using the different pinks together. I've got the lighter pink married in with the darker pink, Trying to keep it kind of even, side by side. Whatever I do on the left side, I want to go back in and do on the right side as well, because I, I do want this to look nice. I want this to look like a hairdresser did it, because that's what I am. So I definitely want to uh, put my, my stamp on there saying, yes, I am a, a salon professional and this is what I did. You can see there's a third color in there that I used very sparingly. It's a, a little bit more of a, a lilac -y purple. I didn't want this to be a purple outcome I just wanted to add dimension because like I said I want I want there to be lots of different shades for the eye to see so again you start working on those outsides there with the lighter color there's that nice little purple line for dimension right down the center and through the ends and then I've got the medium pink going on either side of those sections so that after this gets washed out and her hair is down you're not gonna look at that section and see oh, that's where the purple went in, that's where the pink, that's where the dark pink. 
it's really just going to look to the eye as you know just a, a dimensional pink which i think is cool because it's not something that you see very often when we see fantasy colors it's usually just a a flat palette of fantasy whereas this is going to have areas of lighter lighter areas of darker you know like when we deal with actual permanent hair color and what's great is it didn't take that long to do as you can see this is a quick video yes it is sped up but dealing with the the thinner texture of the fantasy color the ink works in this case allows me to move much faster so it's cool this isn't going to take tons and tons of time but this is something that we can offer our guests you know we want them doing as little as possible on themselves when it comes to their hair at home so the fact that people are seeing this and i have people asking about it i i it's the reason I wanted to make this video. I wanted to say, okay, you work behind a chair. This is how you can do this now a little bit, you know, more how a hairdresser would do it. And this is what it could look like if you do it this way. By all means, anyone that goes in and tries something like this, I'd love to see more variations. Maybe with some, some different colors, some blues and greens, who knows. We just wanted to go with pink because it was going to look really good with Curiel's pretty blue eyes. So I'm using, the reason I chose to use the foils in between these sections, it's certainly not necessary because obviously we're not incubating this color, but I wanted to just use it to separate these sections from each other because we are dealing with a direct dye like this that doesn't need to incubate anything that it touches, it's gonna color. So I wanted to keep that just so that I knew exactly where the color was going on each and every section. So here you can see we're finishing up. She's got a really nice strong fringe, so I wanted to put a little bit more of that baby pink around it and not so much anything going through the fringe. I don't know, I just thought it would look neat. It was my personal preference on this look. And then just finishing up. Getting those ends saturated. One little piece on this side of the fringe, and I believe I went and did one little piece on the other side of the fringe. And then just using your typical balayage skills, knowing that where you put that color is exactly where it's gonna be just eyeballing where I thought it would look neat to have just a little little flash of pink around the bangs. Just carefully paint it right in there and then just let it sit. I let this process for about 15 minutes before we gave her a nice shampoo experience, blew it out, and I wanted to leave her hair nice and straight so that nobody could say that we hid the gradation in the curls. I want you to actually see that it's neat. You know, we went and used a strong color like pink up against a nice soft blonde like she's got and you know it's still it worked the pink looks like it's it's coming from within her hair it's not just a big chunk of pink it's kind of cool she likes it she's been rocking it around town i've seen it so thank you guys check us out at freesaloneducation.com for more videos and i'll see you soon thanks